TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, we are a partner with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. This is the most recent group podcast. The link's down in the description. If you're looking for any of my old videos, they are over here on Facebook. The link's down in the description. And if you want to get some more reactions to some of probably your favorite shows, man, I'm over here on uh, Patreon, man. Links down in the description. Don't forget, we also got the Discord. Links down in the description. <laughs> yeah. uh, police Interceptors, Season 15, Episode 2. Shout out to Jack Ryan. I don't know who you are, my boy, but all heroes don't wear capes. <laughs> you are clearly a hero, my boy. Let's get into this. Police interceptors out in force in one of Britain's highest crime areas. West War again on the front. Rams are run a refuse. Hey, I want to let y'all know I ordered food, right? From Polo Tropical, Polo, Polo Tropical, whatever it's called. On DoorDash. I don't know if y'all got DoorDash out there. I order the food. So, typically, I don't give a tip. I put cash tip or I give a dollar and I give cash when he get here, right? Okay, look, listen to what this dude tell me. He gets here. He arrives, right? This is the conversation we have. I was on fire. Believe me, it's... Like, I've been sitting here for like almost an hour, like trying to calm down. This is what he said. Downstairs. This is at 10 o'clock or 9.50. He says downstairs. I said, okay, so come upstairs. He says, no, sir, I'm downstairs. I said, hmm. He said, I have a child, one-year-old, sleep. That, and he said, that's why you tip, hun. This is somebody named Carlos calls me hun. I said, I tip after the job is complete. Since you act like this, you get no tip and report it. Simple. When you go to a restaurant, do you tip before they, the waitress provides you with the full service? No. I don't, never understand why Uber Eats or, or DoorDash or, or any of these places make you tip before you get your food. Because these are the type of people you deal with. This nigga don't deserve no tip from me. Who is you? Look, believe me. I was, I was, I was, I was way madder than this. <laughs> I'm calm now. So, so, then he said, then he called me hun. That really blew me. I said, bro, I'm a grown man. Don't call me hun, gangster. That's what I call him. <laughs> he got me out of my body. He got me ready to act up because really y'all was going to see me on the news about this door dasher. I don't even care. We're from Florida, we got respect your, respect your, stand your ground. I thought he was gonna come to this door and it was gonna get ugly. Well, I don't even know. I don't care. I'm. I, I'm. I, I got beef with door dashers. I'm on that. <laughs> this is all for entertainment. Um. Yeah, man. So I've been on with hold with DoorDash on the tech side for like 20 minutes. I don't care. I'm gonna wait for the rest of the night until they reply. I need you out here. That's that's way too disrespectful for me, bro, to let it slide. Even I'll hit them up tomorrow too. I don't care. Like I'm 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 involved. I'm I'm on that with him. Whoever it is. And bro, you got my address. You know my face. Come slide on me. <laughs> <laughs> It's 4 a.m. on the night shift, and interceptors Andy Howarth and Bob Hoyle are heading. For now, I'm out here eating a frozen dinner. Back out on patrol. Howarth and Bob Hoyle. It's 4 a.m. on the night shift, 
and interceptors Andy Howarth and Bob Hoyle are heading back out on patrol. Andy describes the best thing about working in West Yorkshire is that all roads lead to Bradford, as it's the busiest place in the world. And within minutes, news comes in of a pursuit a few miles away. I'm not gonna lie, after watching Ben Pearson, I got an all new like outlook. Not a whole new respect. I got a whole new outlook on police interceptors specifically. Andy races to intercept. A blue VW has failed to stop after running a red light. Thankfully, the streets are quiet, but the VW takes more risks, driving at speed on the wrong side of the road and running more red lights. Yeah, five points an hour, a right, 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 onto Leeds Road, Leeds Road, still six zero miles an hour. Now the suspects throw something out of the car. It looks like a set of mole grips, commonly used in burglaries. But are they trying to discard evidence or trying to damage the police car? Either way, the interceptors aren't going to let the suspects... I ain't gonna lie, season 15 busing. They starting off with a chase, like that's tough. ...out of their sights. It's just here to right. And he is only moments away and closing in on the chase. Back to our techno white It's time to try to bring this pursuit to an end. There. Oh, oh. oh yes, come on, guys. Oh, dead. Stop, stop, stop! And he smashed into the rear of the VW. Still ain't got boxing in, it's four of y'all and one up. But it's not enough to take it out. Other well, interceptors arrive and try to block the VW's escape route. <laughs> the getaway driver somehow manages to squeeze past and make off. It was a stop, stop, stop. He's back up and running. I wonder if the police ever try to recruit some of these drivers. That's running from them because this dude is a wizard. I ain't even gonna lie. The interceptors are still hot on his heels. Go, 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 go. The VW ups the ante and once again takes to the wrong side of the road. Bradford Road of a Bradford Road. Back towards Clack Eaton over. The pursuing police car remains on the correct side, keeping pace. But the VW dives down a small side street. No, 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 no. The interceptors are forced to wait till they can spin their car around. Yeah, he's on the wrong side of the central reservation and he's doing a right, right, right. Give it a sec. This one. Whoever driving that BMW, he got three stars in GTA right now. He's working on that fourth star, man. He's moving wild right now. Yeah, he's on Ru Ruben Street. He's gone up to Ruben Street over. Keep going, Bob. Keep going. The car's empty and the occupants have done a runner. Yeah, the vehicle's abandoned Ruben Street over. But the interceptors don't give up that easily. Five four chasing on foot. The suspect has had a head start. This officer has a nose for sniffing out wrong uns. And he spots someone lurking in the bushes. Altasia! On the floor now! Face down! With 50,000 volts aimed directly at him, the suspect knows the game's up. And it's the co- Hey, DoorDash finally replied to me, okay? Collar they wanted. If you see me looking down, I'm gonna keep y'all updated on this. Who's calling me at 10:41? Delete. Five four. I've got the driver. Right. I was behind your back. <laughs> Other interceptors arrive to assist with the arrest. Right. Have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? No. Have you got anything sharp? Anything that's gonna work you or anything that's gonna work no. us? Right. I'm gonna put handcuffs on you. Five four. All right. <laughs> I'm a human, so sorry. I'm back in the channel. 
Right, mate, you're under arrest and suspicion of dangerous driving at this moment in time. The suspect claims ignorance, but this interceptor never forgets a face. With the suspect driver in cuffs and the passenger also locked up, back at the crash scene, Andy reflects on the morning's events. Yeah, it were coming towards us um, and we were so close, it were going to make him go and do something silly. So I just put my vehicle in position where we could try and slow him down. Did they leave, use aliases? This looks like Ben. I don't think they, why would they use We've come, had a coming together, tactical contact it's called for stopping them. Um, didn't quite work as we'd have hoped because it, it stopped him first time, but uh, we managed to slow the vehicle, so that reduces the risk to everybody then. But I ain't caught him on front, I've caught him on side. All ah, right. And that's why I wear the... Resolve your issue? If yes, press one. No, you did not resolve my issue yet. Well, then got because it's abandoned over there, isn't it? So, yeah. um, disabled it to a certain degree. Back with the abandoned car, it becomes clear why the suspects were so keen to avoid capture. Stolen, gotta be stolen. Capture. In the vehicle, there's what looks like a face covering uh, and a baseball cap. And then there's some uh, some tools and there's some, for some reason, some rocks. I don't know if it's just from whether they've picked them up or if they're going to throw them through some patio windows somewhere. The uh, balaclava has been located and, uh, and some more grips as well. It's as a result at the end of the day, it's, there's at least two people off the road. They're not out there breaking into people's houses this evening. So we, we've, we've potentially uh, prevented some crime. Is that a big thing in the UK still, like till this day, like B&E breaking and entering? Curious. The driver has been charged with dangerous driving and is under investigation for aggravated taking a vehicle without consent and conspiracy to commit burglary. The passenger is also under investigation for conspiracy to commit burglary. Still to come, Get off the car. No. an under a death. Putin Lee. Think about police interceptors that set to the park, man. They really, they, first of all, they got this narrator, A1, one of the best. There's no one better. <laughs> they need to do a documentary on whoever's narrating this. He's great. Um, they got him and whoever's directing this, like putting it together and post edit. W, he's almost one of the best editors that I've ever seen. And I would know because I'm one of the best editors on the YouTube platform, so I know. It's the late shift, <laughs> and interceptor Steve Oliver and rookie Aaron Stoney are on the lookout for dodgy drivers. Steve's been on the force since the year 2000. Being a family liaison officer and road death investigator has no time for one particular type of driver. People who drive under the influence drink drugs, it, it, they are just the most selfish people you'll find. Um, they drive on the road and put everybody else at danger, um, you know, not just themselves. Um, and it is a complete disregard for the law and disregard for anybody else's safety uh, as well as their own. Uh, and there's absolutely no excuse for it in my eyes. A man in a van driving aggressively and tailgating has aroused Steve's suspicion. He decides to pull the driver over. Aaron exits and invites the suspect for a chat. Yeah, well. Not bad, mate. How are you? Not too bad. Why do you think I've stopped you then, mate? He decides to pull the driver over. Aaron exits and invites the suspect for a chat. That is, what kind of lazy art? I'm lost. Hey, Paul. Not bad, mate. How are you? Not bad. Why do you think I've stopped you then, mate? Yeah, how are you? Have you had a drink tonight? Yeah, I've got a pint, yeah. Right. The man says he's only had a pint, but it's time to put that claim to the test. What I'm going to do now is just uh, breathalyse you. Yeah. 
because I can smell intoxicants on your breath. Fresh tube. Intoxicants on your breath. Is the is the U.S. educational system failing, or did they just fail me? Because intoxicants. I ain't never heard that used in a sentence or heard it at all. I've heard intoxicated, intox, in, in, intoxicated is the only one I heard. Pop that in the top there. Deep breath from you, mate. Form a seal around that end of the tube and blow steadily until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. Thank you. Okay, you've provided a positive roadside breath sample, sir. Legal limit's 35. You've provided a sample of 92 at the roadside. So you're currently under arrest on suspicion of uh, drink driving. The man is almost three times over the drink driving limit and now facing a ban. I'm going to go and tell his passengers to uh, walk home or uh, if one of them can drive it, check them out for a license and insurance. While Aaron breaks the... DoorDash talking about some nigga... Uh escalated to a higher management he said i'm sorry on the behalf of the dasher i said bro i just want a full refund not just for the, the eight dollars for the sandwich i ordered i want i want the feedback the the the, the, the ha shipping and handling whatever all of that i need it all back my i totaled 16 dollars not eight give me it all back the news to the van's passengers the suspect takes a sudden dislike to our cameraman don't get in here is it yeah, we sat next to you. Well, why is he going to be sat next to me? Because uh, he's in my car, he's coming out with me. Well, I don't want him next to me. After initially appearing calm, the... Hold on. She, they said they already refunded it. I said, okay, cool, but please escalate it. This not snitching. This not snitching. When it comes to food, it's a different ball game. Don't play with my food or my daughter. Like, don't do that. You chose to be a DoorDash delivery man. You chose to do that. You did that. I didn't do that. Like I said, I don't go to 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 Nando's. I don't know if you can sit down and eat Nando's and they bring you your food, but I'm gonna use them as an example. I don't go to Nando's. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, and when the waiter comes and gives me the menu, give her a tip. Do y'all do that? No. It's after she picks up your plates and has done a great job, you give a tip. So why do delivery... I'm... The alcohol is beginning to do the talking. Do me a favor, don't have something next to me, yeah? Where else are you going to sit, mate? And now he's making threats. Well, my mate can... Let him sit there, let him sit there, right, and see what happens then. Stick your hands up front for me, please, sir. I don't want to sit me on the front. Stick your hands up front for me, sir. No, it's not what The man now refuses to be cuffed. And his bravado soon turns ugly. I don't stop here. Oh my! Could tell he's an ex-hooligan. I got it. Yeah, really. Get out the car! No! Get out the car! No! Get out the car! Extra Romeo three one. We've got other units in the Get area. Please. The road near him. I don't think they never should have let him in the police car, like just that casually in the first place. That's a mistake on y'all end, like low key. Like, I was confused when he just walked ever so frolicky to the back seat in the first place. Like, that's tough. I'm late. Why are you making this difficult, Pop? Why are you making this difficult? Sit on me. Get out the car. Sit on me. Get out the car. So where it was. Yeah. I told you to get out the car. You're not right. Get out the car. Get out the car now. Get out the car. Nah. They give him one last chance to put the cuffs on. And sit front, please. Sit front, sit front. There, done, innit? Nah. No. But he's not budging and becoming increasingly belligerent. The interceptors need to take back control before the situation escalates further. So Steve pulls out his parva spray. Uh, so what are you in the car? Don't you front. Top, eh? And sit front, right. please, sir. Steve has no option but to spray the suspect. What you saying against the gas, mate? The man seemed more concerned about his designer top than being sprayed. But as Aaron steps to one side, Steve unleashes the parva. It's similar to pepper spray, causing temporary pain in the eyes. It's had the desired effect. The man yields and is cuffed. Why do you 
That's one thing. I've never been pepper sprayed, never have wanted to be pepper sprayed, never have even thought about how it felt. No thanks. The suspect is sat on the pavement to recover from the effects of the parva spray. Lay him down on his side. Get inside. Stay there. Go out. First time, that wouldn't have happened, would it? Yeah, we've managed to uh, get the gentleman out of the vehicle. Uh, he has been parvered. Uh, if we just request a, uh, a van, please, for transport. The parver spray is partly used due to the quick recovery time, and this man should be fine in 15 to 20 minutes. How are we doing, mate? You all right? Although the effects from the booze, both on his head and driving licence, might take a little longer. What do we think about sitting the gentleman up? I could have swore one of his shoes was off when they was doing this. Now they both on. They put his shoe back on, that's top. Yeah, do I sit up? Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. One, two, three. Now. There we go, sir. Keep your legs out in front of you. That's it. Makes it easier for you. The man's ride to the nick arrives. Here we go, sir. We'll wait for the van to pull up. Up in the cage and we'll stick you in the back. One, two, three. Up we go. That's it. Walk to the back of the van for me, sir. Up you go, sir. Have a seat down to your left. Yeah, you can get my T-shirt, yeah? You can just sit quite back from my It's not the parva making the man cry. Bro pushing 50 and he talking about rip my T-shirt. Like, it's Tommy Hilfiger. Go get another one from Marshalls. Chill out. Now, it's his ripped favourite T-shirt. Steve has no sympathy. The thing that drew our attention to him in the first place was his manner of driving, being uh, ridiculously close to the vehicle in front and accelerating hard up to get to the vehicle in front. Um, it is that sort of driving that, that causes collisions, causes uh, injury uh, and potentially causes death. Uh, and we have five deaths a day uh, on Britain's roads. We don't have five murders a day. Um, so why are we happy to accept five deaths a day? Uh, it's beyond me. The man blew 68 down at the station, almost twice the legal limit. He pleaded guilty to drink driving and received a £120 fine, a £30 victim surcharge, £85 costs, and was disqualified from driving for 20 months. Part of the interceptor's job is passing on their knowledge to new recruits, and learning the ropes is Dan Ledgeway. I'm looking to get into traffic, and therefore I've come on a four-day attachment. Try and get more of an insight as to what the department does, etc. Dan's guide to policing the streets is Chris Basto. First job of the shift is assisting another unit with a dodgy looking Merc. Not suggesting it'll fail to stop, but if we can uh, change the you guys want to have a track deal. Yep, happy with that. The lads arrive, and new boy Dan takes the lead. And um, I'll check car as well. Now then, fella, how are we doing? Do you want to just turn engine off for us and just jump out at the car? Just going to take hold of you whilst we take you to the car. Yeah. Have you got driver licence and yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. all insured? Yeah, yeah, lovely. Sure. We'll get you in here because there's too many people stood out looking, so... And while Dan chats to the driver... What I'm going to do is I'm going to caution you, OK, so you don't have to say anything. Chris checks over the motor. It's a disaster on wheels. As Faz told you. Well, he said we've got quite a few things. Yeah, dangerous part because of the substantial damage to the near side. It's sticking out, it's sharp, it's protruding as it should do. Honestly, it still shocks me to know that you can't drive a beater around in the UK. Your, your car got to be at least looking all right. It can't, like, this is normal in America. Cars like that got in the fender benders and never got fixed, still driving around the world, it's normal. Uh, it's displaying white light to rear. It's got a defective front offside tyre because there's a, an egg shaped bulge in it. And the number plates don't conform with regulations neither. Yep. Um, I think that's it. You no think? MOT. But it is taxed. But taking to the roads in an accident waiting to happen is taxing Chris's patience. How come you're driving around in that, sir? I'm going to MOT it on side and I'm going to repair it on side. Yeah, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't be driving it around like that. That, if you hit a pedestrian with that, it's going to slice them in half. It's not looking great for the driver. You're going to get at least three points. It's probably a, a death trap on the road. 
if it had collided with the pedestrian or that bulge had popped, it could have had quite a nasty accident. It's dangerous. And this mangled motor needs to be taken off the road. What I'm going to advise you to do is to park it up on a side street, leave it there. The next time that car gets driven, we'll be on the back of a recovery truck when you're going to get it fixed. If you got caught driving that again and you were to go to court, you'd be likely looking at disqualification because you're gonna end up totting up that many points. Um, so what are you gonna do with that car? I'm gonna leave it here, I'm gonna fix it. Right, lovely, that's what I wanted to hear. The man claims he will get the vehicle recovered, but also says he lives just round the corner. That does not happen here, I'm telling you. It doesn't matter how far you live, don't drive home in it. It doesn't matter whether it's a minute or five minutes or ten minutes away, don't drive that car. They escort the driver to a parking spot to await recovery. And Dan has some parting words. Why couldn't they just escort him home? He lives one minute away. Words of advice. Don't, don't run the risk of doing it again. If we see you driving, we will be stopping you. All right, take the advice. Right. Cheers. But will the man's short trip home prove too enticing? So we'll see. We'll see if we see it again in 10, 15 minutes. There's no time to rest, as they're called to assist a pursuit in the northern area of Leeds. Great party town. An undercover unit has been tailing a black Range Rover, whose passengers have been acting suspiciously. It looks like the driver has clocked the unmarked cop car and boots it. It's a dead end and a decamp. The driver legs it while the passenger gives himself up. It's now a manhunt for the driver. Chris and Dan arrive on scene. I've got you, though. That blood pressure. Fuck yeah. I think he's gone to ground. Uh, somewhere in this area. Yeah, somewhere around here, about. Does he run around here, then? I come through there and I've lost him. I've gone through there. Yeah. He's come this way. He could either be to ground behind bushes. As they prepare for a search, there's some rustling from behind some bins. It's the driver. Unfortunately for him, he's chosen a rubbish hiding place. And now he's in cuffs. Rookie cop Dan once again takes the lead. How old are you, mate? Not speaking to you. Right, mate, when was the last time you had a drink? You had a drink in the last 20 minutes? That's a good question. How old are you? Because I've seen a ball spot up here. And, you know, nothing wrong with that. I'm completely bald. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm not out here running from the police. I got a lot to lose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... Uh-uh. Two minutes. Just told you. I'm not speaking to you. You're not speaking to me. That's it, peasant. What are we going to do, mate? Yeah. We're going to request a sample of breath from you, okay? We're going to warn you that failure to provide, refusal to provide, and providing a positive sample are all arrestable offences. Right. What I want you to do, seal your lips around there, take a deep breath, and empty your lungs into the tube. That's crazy. His description was just that are all arrestable offences. So what do you want him to do? Right. What I want you to do, seal your lips around there, take a deep breath and empty your lungs into the tube. The man refuses to blow. Again, mate, I'll warn you once more. My solicitor will explain everything. Once more, failure to provide to an officer yeah. who has requested it following a moving road traffic offence is an everything. offence my solicitor will explain everything. which you may be arrested for. Listen. Last opportunity listen. to provide me with a listen. sample listen of breath. To listen to me. My solicitor will speak to you. Right? Regarding... Your solicitor cannot provide me with a sample my of breath though. My solicitor will speak to you. Dan. Right? I'd say that as a fail to provide. Yeah. Speak to him. my solicitor. You've right? been polite. You've asked several times. Take the test then. No, it's not. 
It's been a tricky encounter, but Dan has handled it well. And now the uncooperative suspect starts on the verbals. Take me to please. Then. It's not a game, pal. Take me, Ethan, do you think I don't... No. What? It's not a game. Yeah? Do you, what do you think I'm a... Green or? What's yeah. that? Is that what you think? You didn't intimidate me. That's what you think. I'm not you're trying... Am I, does it do look like you're trying to intimidate me? Yeah, you're trying to intimidate me. You both stood over me, looming like you're going to intimidate me. Do you think you're going to intimidate me? You've been doing this since I was 10 years old, mate. Ah, okay. So you're right. choosing then? Okay. No, I'm not choosing. Confirmed, you're pushing 50, you're acting like, huh? He's an office review, so... Yeah. The driver's defiance means he's arrested and will be tested back at the station. Good result, all in all. He refused to provide breast sample, and I think they've locked him up for suspicion of theft of motor vehicle as well. So he'll go to custody now, see if he'll provide back there, and if not, um, yeah, we're done for failing to provide. But it's a good result, one in custody. With the driver off to the nick, Chris and Dan decide to check on the man with the mangled Merc. What are the chances you think that he'll just drive out in front of us, isn't it? <laughs> and lo and behold. <laughs> He's driving off in it. You are kidding. Oh, that's bad luck, my boy. You guess where you going, buddy? Maybe to jail. Your car is definitely getting impounded. <laughs> Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. What a... Blanca? Come and join us again, mate. Seconds out, round two. Right. So, here we are again. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned. Something which you may later learn in court, and anything you do say it may be given. Key in the back seat, like this is a brand new experience. Like you, it just didn't happen. Even in evidence, I would not be surprised if he like, no, that's my twin brother. I can't. Even... What was the advice, or what did we oh, tell yeah, you? I want to take it home and leave it there. That's what I'm you just want to take it home and leave it parked there. And what did we say was the consequences of you oh, doing what you, that? What you thinking me? Um, what's it called? Tell get me and to take me home. Well, why, why would we do that? Because then we're potentially then aiding you in committing offences. It's not the ticket home the suspect was hoping for. I might do a ticket for no MOT. I know he's already got one, but he's taking Mick by driving that away, despite us telling him he shouldn't be. And if I don't give him anything for MOT, he's just going to continue into... What do you mean here? I don't want to take it home for that. Well, what did I say when you said you live a minute away? Can I take it home? What did I say? I said no, you can't because you'll commit further offences. The suspect's excuse of only living a minute away is as dodgy as his car, and Chris is close to losing his rag. What don't you understand about not driving that car? I don't understand what you don't understand. I don't care how far you live. I've told you, you cannot drive that vehicle in that condition. It's dangerous. That will kill somebody. I'm not angry and frustrated that you have chosen to drive that vehicle knowing you could cause those injuries to somebody. And that's why my face isn't very happy. The driver received six points on his license, a hundred pound fine, a victim surcharge of £30 and costs of £85. The runner from the Range Rover had a change of heart down the station and blew under the drink driving limit. The car turned out to be a hire car in the name of the driver. No further action was taken against him or his passenger. Action had a change of heart down the station. The runner from the Range Rover had a change of heart down the station and blew under the drink driving limit. The car. It's one of the keys. Refuse the roadside, but take the twist station one. Sober up. We said we heard that in the um, previous episode. A lot of people try to do that in hopes that they sober up or get underneath the limit. Car turned out to be a hire car in the name of the driver. What's a hire car? Like a rented car? No further action was taken against him or his passenger. Still to come. Currently failing to stop. stop it. Bradford, a city of over half a million, and one that has seen a rise in investment in recent years. But this metropolitan melting pot still keeps the interceptors on their toes. Oh! 
Spit it out! Spit it out! Spit what out? That was last episode, wasn't it? But it took me a while to get used to it, really. I see, it's just... It's crazy. I joined traffic in 2009. I came from working in Huddersfield Town Centre to working here. And this is on a totally different planet. Whatever, if you think you've seen it all, come here and I guarantee you that. It's the start of the late shift and interceptor Chris Spenner Spencer is out with rookie Haley French. Yeah. Chris is an advanced driver whose favourite subject at school was Y'all can hear me a little bit better. Maths. And some Shout out to the first responders, man. I forgot to mention y'all in the beginning of the video, man. Love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all pushing the videos with the comments and the likes, man. The likes, more importantly. Thing doesn't add up with the VW in front. Chris suspects the driver doesn't have any insurance, but before they can run the details, the VW makes a break for it. Not stopping here, Rich. X-ray Romeo, three one. Here we go. The pursuit is on. Laughing. X-ray Romeo, three one. It's the middle of the school holidays, with children out playing, but the BW is tearing it through the streets, ragging it straight over a busy junction. Like this, this guy, like, is the lights and sirens even on? This, like this car, com this car completely does not see this police car. Saint Stephen's Road. Look how close he is. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Traffic is light. Safe to continue. Can I request a pack, please? I am T-Pack trading a suitable vehicle. T-Pack stands for Tactical Pursuit and Containment, and Chris needs more units to help bring this pursuit to an end. We are a right, right onto Touchborn Road. And it is safe to continue. The VW is flooring it over speed bumps, but try as he might, he's unable to shake off advanced driver Chris. Left. Left. To New Cross Street, an immediate right on Stunning. You have to do this. Kill it. It's right onto Evans Terrace. Where's she get a house phone from? This is season 15. Like, there got to be some better technology than this. She got a... She got a... She got a... Boop, 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 boop. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Moto. What is that? i never seen that in a cow car. Spec clearly doesn't care for other road users or pedestrians and heads straight across a pavement. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good. Oh, there we are. Romeo 3-1, we are now on to Parkside Road. Oh. Speed is 5-0 miles an hour. Traffic is light, it's still safe to continue. After leading Chris on a chase through the estates, the VW now heads down the back alleys. Might be a park car down here. Have the kids. Right. Just in a back alley, we're going to come out into Parkside Road again, I believe. Just one sec. It's she is getting the thrill out of this. Look at her. Into parts I really gonna believe. Just one sec. Yeah, we now want to walk right terrace. Unable to shake Chris, the suspect decides to try a different means of escape. Stop! Stop! While Haley chases on foot. Give me a bike. Come on, guys. Chris goes from four wheels to two as he commandeers a bicycle. And footage of Spenner's sprint after the suspect is even captured on a mobile phone. I lost him on that corner. I'll go down there. No, stop, stop. Sprint after the suspect. Look how fast his feet is going. That's the, that's the, he got the mountain bike on one. 
You know how you can flip the settings on a mountain bike? One, two, three, four. The easiest setting that go the fastest. <laughs> I'm sorry. Spect is even captured on a mobile phone. That's funny. I lost him on that corner. I'll go down there. Oh, God. Unfortunately, Spenner fails to summon his inner Chris Boardman, and the suspect manages to escape. Yeah, sorry. I was trying running. I've lost him, though. Here's your male in a white top. Well, you saying both. They return to the abandoned vehicle for some post-pursuit analysis. And it looks like they've got an audience. Well, no, cars are coming there, so I went for a bike. We were in lowest gear, so... You're in the lowest gear and the saddle were too low. I told you it was in the lowest gear, his feet was moving too fast. Those are my reasons for not catching up with him. Not that he's a middle-aged man, slowly on the decline. Well, you lost probably fast, man. I've got a fast car. I've got a fast car. Have you what felt whatever this stuff is? Try to run with this, it's like, try to run with someone on your back. While most of the gathered crowd seem good-natured, their numbers are growing. And it only takes a few bad eggs to change the atmosphere. Oh! Get off the car! Get off the car! People shouldn't mistake my niceness for weakness here. But the mischief soon turns into something less friendly. Eggs are beginning to be thrown at the police car. Their aim is as poor as their attitude. But if you try enough times, these sorts of situations can quickly escalate. I'm not sensationalizing or glor glorizing, but that's tough. And eggs are followed by rocks. A stone shatters the windscreen. And it's not just the car that's a target. Yeah. Oh. See, now we're getting a bit naughty. One of these rocks could seriously injure them, yet Chris has seen it all too often. Amazing. It's amazing how people play up to a crowd, isn't it? Safety in numbers. And before the situation turns any worse, it's time for Haley and Chris to move out. If we're going to get the window smashed, it's going to be now as well. People thinking, oh, we're going to get one of the poor rat cops. Ha ha. It's happening more and more because people have just got such disdain for us. In some areas, anyway. And I suppose it's it's that mob mentality when someone starts, so one person starts doing it and starts egging everyone else on. It gets worse quickly. At least nothing's been smashed about it before. I've had bricks thrown at the car, so. Eggs here, I'm going to have to bloody spend five minutes. Oh, they have smashed my window. So the car is now off the road. The driver is still outstanding, but the he should probably pull that car over. It's unsafe to drive on the road. Get several citations for that. I know the police station is close, but no, no, no. The car was recovered by the owner, who claims it was stolen in a burglary. The investigation continues. With new powers to take untaxed cars off the road, the interceptors are cracking down on offending drivers. Sophie Hawkswell and Chris Basto have come to assist their colleagues who've stopped two men in a blue Audi that's come up as having no tax or insurance. You're wishing you'd gone to McDonald's? Is yeah, it the well, rotator from McDonald's? Yeah, I'm coming this one going because I thought it was to lead into McDonald's. And I've come here and I'm not. But there's no McDonald's. It's close. Yeah, it's next. Sergeant Sophie knows all about fast food. She used to work for a well-known burger chain before becoming a copper. Wendy's? Her partner, Chris, prefers a Chinese takeaway, and he's a self-confessed petrol head. What power did they come out of in the, the factory? Got it off, brother. I say, because normally, after a few years, it starts losing quite a bit of power. The tools would break standard, but it's mapped up. But the motor's tech spec isn't the issue. With regards to the, uh, the tax, unfortunately, we didn't quite these, and we are going to see the car. You're taking the car? We are. So we've, we've, got, we've got no alternative. No the the news no isn't well received. Do you know what? Last time I gave a cop on my key, they lost it, so yeah, listen, yeah. get this on camera here. Yeah. It's all on camera. 
Right, I'm passing this call for my key now. So yeah. And now the passengers claiming someone else is to blame for their situation. You know what it is, brother? Yeah, you see Romanians, Kosovan, driving round in motor, six to a man up there, with no one out, you don't all about it. Well, I don't, because when I see it, I take car off them. And the driver makes an interesting confession. This cool. is why I failed to stop at half the time. You know what? I wish I failed to stop then, because I know I got away from it. You know what I mean? And then, but then you fail to stop, and you're looking at this. You get done for dangerous driving, won't you? I get away. I smoke out. But he's not getting away with having no tax. I'm just going to give you the ticket now. And there's also the issue of no insurance. This police holder may also drive any motor vehicle or motorcycle. Not the driver's got a letter which he says shows that he's insured. Oh, that policy there covers me to drive any. But he's called. Insured. But he's called yeah. Co-op, well, who co look after your policy, and they say that's what you've got, you've got to bring up with them. They're the one who, who basically caused it to be seized by saying you're not covered. If it were tax and insured, you wouldn't have got stopped. Why would I pay tax for me? You give all money to the cost of insurance. Why would I pay tax for me? Not fit drugs. Man, because I took us cars. But taking his car might not see this boy racer off the road. Because I've got an A6 at home that I'm off to go and dump now. No, but will you stop playing? So now you got an Audi A6 at home. No, you do not, bro. Oh, no. is them the keys? My bad, I spoke too soon. Because I've got an A6 at home that I'm off to go and dump now. No, but will you stop playing? No, I want to go and dump in A6 now. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Hey, Siri. Audi A6. The Audi A6 is an executive car made by the German automaker Audi. Now in its fifth generation, the successor to the Audi 100 is manufactured in Neckersol. That boy bored out his spare key. I don't believe it. <laughs> and two cars is about to become one car as the recovery truck arrives. Right, you're taking the car for no tax and that's it. You're giving me a little relief for them. I go pay the hundred pound tomorrow, and the hundred and sixty pound to get the car back straight away. Simple as. Simple as. But Sophie has an even simpler idea. So it would have just been a lot easier to get it taxed and cheaper. And this delightful pair are back to blaming their favourite European scapegoats. Great tax, but no fixes, bro. No, no. Give you talk possible and that. I don't know why you think all tax goes to Cosland, because road tax don't go to What's all done? Who, who pays what tax, mate? We know people on Dole, mate. Who pays that tax? Not road, pays, not road tax. Who's on, who's on, who's on Dole? Not, not road tax. Mate. Road tax has nothing it's to do with Dole, mate. does it? I'd someone set up foreigners on fire all about that, mate. Burn a lot well, that's a great attitude to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely that's brilliant. Why well, that's why it couldn't be in states in, because people think like you. Yeah, of course. Labour people, man. I'm not a racist, so that's why the country like it is. Well, that comment you just made is racist. No, it isn't. Now the driver decides to stage a sit in. On the car bonnet. He's gonna have a long wait, pal. I'm waiting for the insurance to come back. We're not doing. Do you got a key? Yeah, we're, I'm, we're gonna pull him off here if he don't come off. I'm gonna yeah, ask yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The car needs to go. We're not. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, you have to get off the car. If you don't get off the car, physical force will be used. Do you want to sign? Well, it, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to sign for the ticket? I'm about to give you. No. No, I'm not waiting. Decline. What? So I've got to wait for you, but you, you can't wait for me, no? Do you want to sign for the no, ticket? No, no, no. Listen to me. No, you no, can't, you can't wait for me. Robert, you haven't been reasonable at any point, have you? You set up anchors. Thank you. That's what you found. There you go, Robert. That's the ticket. It appears that the lads have finally admitted defeat. Yes, it's red. They're just not happy because the car's being seized. And then that's when the attitude's changed because they're not getting what they want. And then it's all our fault, supposedly. My argument is if it were tax and insured, it wouldn't have been stopped and can't be seized. So if you abide by the rules of the road, there's no issue. Oh, what's the clutch? But this boy racer seems keen to have the last word. I've had 180 mile an hour out of that car, man. Any beamer up, man. Any beamer down M1 there, man. 180. You know what? 180 is a stretch. So you're telling me that car is as fast as a Honda CBR 1000 RR? Because allegedly, I have one of those. And allegedly, I've went 188. Allegedly. I don't know how much fact it is to that. But... The driver was later reported for driving a car with no tax or insurance. He awaits his day in court. No action was taken against the passenger. Sophie and Chris are used to situations like this, but that doesn't make them any easier to handle. 
There's no need really, is there, for them to behave in that way. At the end of the day, road tax isn't that expensive. They don't want to pay road tax because that tax goes to pay for, for cost of as they said. This is just absolutely ridiculous. They obviously don't even know what road tax goes to pay for. Doesn't matter who you are. If you're not tax insured, we will stop you uh, and we will take your car off you. I don't even know what that means. Tax insured? What is it? Road tax insured? What are you talking about? Still to explain somebody. Come. Boardman is out. It's early morning in Little Horton Green. And rookie Eve Boardman is out on patrol with interceptor Chris Percy. And who better to show her the ropes than this veteran cop? Chris is a multi-talented musician who plays for the West Yorkshire Police Band. He's got an ear for a tune, but also an eye for a dodgy driver. He spotted a BW he wants to give the once over. Not to worry about, we're just doing some stop checks with it being this time of night. You alright, just jump in the back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The man is led to the police car for a routine chat. It won't be long, guys, alright. <sighs> What's your name? Uh, talent. Talent. Is this your car, Talent? Yeah. Like I said, it's not to worry about. Just, we do stop checks at this time of night, that's all. Insured on it? Yeah. MOT tax? Yeah. Cool. So far, so good for talent. But the questions are about to get tricky. And uh, what's your date of birth? Pardon? Date of birth? Uh, 1966. Birth year of 1966. <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to do the math. Hold on, 34. 34 plus at least. So you, you in your 50s. That's tough. Well, you have that looking younger than me. I know you lying. This means this baby faced driver is apparently 52 years of age. What's your full birthday? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's all right. 6th of June, 1996. Do you mean it? 1966, sorry. 6th of June. 8th of June, sorry. 8th of June, 1966. 1966? I feel like I'm drunk now. <laughs> As talent ensures, he gets breathalyzed later. Eve continues to probe for the truth. When's your birthday? 1966. How old are you? About 42. You look quite I don't look young. No talent. You look like you might be lying. You're yeah. 42? Yeah. Have you got any ID on you? You look about 20. I, I didn't even bring no ID. I got no ID. Who are you? Pardon? What, what are your real details? 8th of June 1966. Yeah. Right. So, what's your exact birth? What's your exact. How old are you? Yeah. What's your age? My age? Yeah. 40, 42. 42? Yeah. And you're born in 1966. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't add up though, does it? Yeah, it does. Talent by name, but not so talented at maths. Think about it. <sighs> 1966 and you're 42, it doesn't add up, does it? How old are you really? Talent story and sums might not have. Talent would be probably one of the worst on Britain's Got Talent. He's, he is not educated. <laughs> up, but experienced Chris has it all worked out. Your dad's policy and you're not insured, are you? Bingo. Yeah. Sound about right? Policy, yeah. So you're not insured on it. Have you got a license? Yeah, I've got a license. Have you? Does your dad know you're driving it? Pardon? Does no, your dad know you're driving it? No. no. What will your dad do when he finds out? He's going to what? Freak out. Yeah. Not only for nicking his car, but also... <laughs> Bro said I'm 44. Don't I look young? I look... Like... <laughs> he really tried it. Cut it out, my boy. So for not knowing his birthday. So you don't know how old, how old your dad is, do you? He was born in 1966, it would be 52. We're not stupid talent, you know. You really look 40 odd. <laughs> Good try though. <laughs> Having failed. He was in the back like, yeah, back, black don't crack, you know. The black of the beard is sweet as <laughs> Sally Wilder. The maths exam, it's time for a new test. Have you had a drink at all tonight? 
Yeah. I'll just check. We'll just eliminate alcohol out of your system. Just have a, we'll have a, Ooh, a breath uh, test from you. That's it. Keep going, 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 keep going. That's it. It's that. You just want to pull that tube out, stick it in your pocket, it's been in your mouth, and dispose of it somewhere or keep it as a souvenir. It's a better result for talent this time. Yeah, that's good. Green light, at least you haven't been drinking. And Chris has a theory as to why talent is out in his dad's motor. He's gone to bed and you just nicked it, have you? Pardon? He's, he's gone to bed and you've just uh, took the keys and gone out with it. If talent took the vehicle without permission, he could be in further trouble. He could be arresting you for theft of motor vehicle this moment in time because you're, you're driving it without his consent. But Chris gives talent and his family a break. Yeah, but what we'll do, because it's your dad, and he'll probably want to, we'll, we'll support you, is uh, we're going to, you're going to be reporting the offence of driving with no insurance. The vehicle has got um, it's MOT. Your your license is in order. It's just that you're driving this vehicle uninsured. Um, so you're going to be reported for the offence of driving with no insurance. Or put another way, six points on his license and a 300 quid fine. And the vehicle will be seized and reported by us because obviously you've got to drive it any further. It's been an expensive night for talent. That, that's 150 pounds, so I'd imagine they'll be chasing you. Are you working? They'll probably chase you up for that, won't he? And then there's a storage fee of 20 pound a day, so the longer he leaves it there, the more he's going to rack up the charges. Yeah, I don't know why you, you're working and you can afford it. Why don't you get yourself insured? Yeah, I was, I was, obviously I was going to get... silly. You know what I'm saying? That's typical. Try to be have no insurance as long as you can. I'm myself insured on it, but I've only, like, literally just started working. Yeah. I just had bad luck with you a lot. Stopping me and shit. Well, there's loads of us. It was a high risk. I mean, it's your choice, isn't it? Finding out the hard way, aren't you? Yeah, well, All right. Yep, yeah, OK. As talent heads off, wishing he'd paid more attention in GCSE maths, Chris sums the night up. He was just making figures up in his head. Quite often people have something prepared that's a bit more realistic, but I think we just caught him on the hop, he wasn't expecting to be stopped. And he was just trying to make it as he goes along. So, uh, yeah, pretty unbelievable, that one. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. First responders, thank you for hitting that first that like button. Even if you're watching this on a regular TV, you can hit the like button. I'm gone.